God feel about Esau, bro? Well, you know According what? to the Bible. You know what? <laughs> God love everybody. I'll give you Wait, that. Wait, we use bread that he hates. Hey, man wrote that book. God ain't wrote that book. Wait, man wrote that wait, book. wait. The finger of God. They were written by who? The finger of God. Our people don't believe in God is the problem. That's right. Hey, you right. don't believe in God because you ain't you. This truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men that stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. Exactly. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It doesn't matter how we feel or what we think. We all have our own issues, but who's going to rise up when the Most High calls? It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg, Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots, no excuse, let's push this troop. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready. We're coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel, united in Christ, is a non violent, Bible based movement. Are you I see? But I proved that, but he could but he's so deep. Right. If your spirit not deep with God, you will never know. There you go. So that would mean he, that would mean he ain't with God. Right. So based on what you said, that would mean he ain't with God. Is, is, is that what you say? He ain't with God. Let me tell you to work out with God. Okay? Huh? This is my understanding, right? Go ahead, what's your understanding? You got a spirit, right? When you're home, you feed that flesh, right? Yeah. The spirit needs to feed too, right? Absolutely. So we gotta feed with the word okay. of God. We don't do that. No, we don't. As, you're now, right. We As a community, we do not feed so, our spirit. But we feed our flesh. We feed our spirit. But we do feed our flesh. Yeah, we feed, we feed our flesh with all manner of sin. No matter right. what, we feed our flesh. All right. But now, but so listen, I got a question for you. I got a question for you because I'm gonna I'm be honest with you. Yeah, We're right. not up here to learn from you because I know you don't know the Bible yet. I don't have no but my heart. Oh, God God How is your heart with God if you don't know God's word? God. That's, that, I don't understand. You God. just said that yourself. No, no, we're finished. You want me to ask a question? Okay, right? go ahead. Let's do the answer. No, no, no. I'm First John 2. That's the question. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't gonna talk about it. No, yeah, we do. We do. No, we're gonna talk about it. Okay. We're gonna talk about it. So, about. the question is, how do you know God without the Bible? God let me inside. How? It's what is, how do you know that? Well, what did you hear that from? I ain't gotta hear it. I believe it. What did you believe that from? I don't read the book. What said uh, that God is in you? Well, the Bible never said it. Huh? Yeah, you hear this? So my sister, I'm a recorder. I'm going to tell you what he said. So I asked him. So I asked him. The mic went out? Okay. So I asked him, how does he have a relationship with God? Or how does he know God without knowing the word of God? He said, I don't have to. I just got to have a relationship with God. And he and so I have, he said I have to I have to uh, what did he say? What did you say? What did I say? You said that you don't I, have that. You, I, I that get you, it. I get it. That you don't have to know the Bible. It. No, you you don't have it. Back then we couldn't read the Bible. Okay, read I'm Bible. asking no, no, you no, listen, how listen, do listen, you listen, have listen. a relationship with God if you don't know because, the Bible? Because you got love, God can show. How do you love Him? God is love. How? How do you love everybody? How do you because know God that? Love you right? Yes. He loves you, right? Yes. God, and God you, right? does not love everybody. Yes, it right. does. Now, you heard that sis? He yes. said, God loves everybody. God loves everybody. Let's read that in Romans chapter 9, verse 13. Man, you, man, you man, tell me book. what God is about to say. <laughs> Our people God. do not know God. Right. God, no, he right. said that God dwells in you. Right. We're gonna, he said that's not in the Bible that God dwells in you. God wow. Let's read that. <laughs> No, I want that. I want, I want the first John. God what was that? Romans. Romans 9. Because yes, he said God loves everybody. God loves Let's see what the Bible says. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. This Read is the New Testament. Go ahead. As it is written. As it's written. Because it's written in the Old Testament too. Go ahead. 
Jacob have I loved. Jacob is the 12 tribes of Israel. God yeah. says he loved them. Yeah. Go ahead. But Esau have I hated. How does he feel about Esau? Esau have I hated. How does God feel about Esau, bro? Yeah, you know According what? to the Bible. You know what? <laughs> God love everybody. I'll give you Wait, that. Wait, we just read that he hates. Hey, man wrote that book. God ain't wrote that book. Wait, man wrote wait, that book. wait, wait. Now go man ahead. Wrote, no, 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 no. Listen, listen. First man, Corinthians man wrote that <laughs> chapter 3, God verse 16. Yeah, we, because he also we, said we that the Bible God, does like not said, say that God dwells in us. God. Do you go to church? No, church don't prove Have you ever heard that God dwells in us before? Have you ever heard that God dwells in us out of the Bible? Yeah, that he dwells in us. Let's see if it's in the Bible that he does. Go ahead. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. We are what? The temple of God. Our bodies are the temple of God. Go ahead. And that the Spirit of God dwell in you. The Spirit of God is where? Dwell in you. So the Bible said the Spirit of God is in you. That's Go right. ahead. And if any man defile the temple of God, and if you defile the temple of God, meaning you put drugs in it, you fornicate with that body God let you borrow, right. you go out here and worship idols, you defile that temple, what God gonna do? Him shall God destroy. God, you know what? Him shall God destroy. He's gonna destroy you, brother, if you don't repent. Right. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. The Bible said it. God just said, okay, what is what is love according to God? Listen, you know? What's love according to God? If God's so evil, he was destroyed oh, all Lucifer. I want to hear your question. Because he ain't got it. His brother's bugged out. He don't want to answer the question. He don't, he don't even believe in the Bible. Thousand years. Right. Can men can men predict that? All praise. So you're, you're saying no. Absolutely. Absolutely. So so why won't you answer with a yes or no? Because the man wrote the Bible. All praise. Now what kind of men wrote the Bible? Huh? Now watch this. You, you hear what he said? Can read. Now what wait? Now why would they kill us if we read the Bible? They right. kill us. We had all God. No. Why would they kill us they if God. we read the Bible in slavery? Why would they hang us? I'm you, know? you know why they would hang us if we read the Bible, sis? Watch this. Let's see how God feels about the Israelites. Because he didn't kill white. White people didn't kill a white man for reading. They killed black people for reading the Bible in slavery. That's right. a historical fact. Right. That's right. Historical fact. That's a and this is no, that's a fact and you know it. You are BSing, bro. You are lying. You are a liar. Period. Read. Deuteronomy. Chapter Here we go. Watch this. Let's see how God feels about the Israelites. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Go ahead. Yeah. Let, let her hear the Bible, bro. Hey, bro. You are the devil the Bible speaks so. of. That's right. You yeah, are what? Satan, bro. The devil know the Bible too. And, and you don't. But yeah, you, you are Satan. You 
You are I'm safe. I'm blessed to worship you. You don't know what God got from me. You know I know you, you don't, don't know God. God. Hey. God my child. I know you don't know God. Right. Okay. You don't know I know God. I do know. They coming God out. told you me how to do some part from me. Oh, praise you. First, now, sis, let's see how we know God. First John. First John, chapter 2, verse 3. Hereby we do know that we know him. This is how we know we know God. Go ahead. If we keep his commandments. If we do what? Keep his commandments. If we do what? Keep his commandments. The only way you know God is keep his commandments. That's right. And you ain't keeping them because I can see it. Right. Because you don't even wear these on your clothes. So I know you don't even know the law. We would get killed in slavery for reading the Bible. Go ahead. For thou art an holy people. Go ahead. Unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. So God chose the Israelites. He didn't choose everybody. Right. We already ready. Don't love everybody. Right. So we now we know he didn't choose everybody. Go ahead. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people. Uh-huh. Unto himself. Go ahead. Above. No, we are equal. Above. No, we are below. Above. He said the Israelites are above. Go ahead. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's why they killed us for reading the Bible. That's right. That's right. Because we are God's children, literally. Right. That's right. But the problem is God's children don't want to be God's children. Right. We want to be the children of the devil. That's right. We would rather be the white man's kids. That's why we follow his religion. That's why we follow their school. Right. That's why we do everything they do. Right. Yet still, God said, keep the commandments. We say, no, Lord, I don't want to do that. And then God kill us. Right. Then God put us in the hoods and ghettos. Black men wrote the Bible and they were inspired by the... Matter of fact, give me that in uh, uh, Exodus, the people of God. Out. Let's get that. You know what I want? You know what I'm talking about? Watch this. We're going to read who wrote the commandments. Here we go. Since you asked, we're going to read it out of the Bible. We gonna read it right now. Ask all these crazy questions. Who wrote the Bible? Who gave the commandments? God. God wrote it with his finger. That's, That's what it. the Bible says. The Go book ahead. of Exodus chapter 31 verse 18. Go ahead. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communion with him uh -huh. upon Mount Sinai. So this is when Christ, this is when Moses was on Mount Sinai talking to God. Go ahead. Two tables of testimony, uh -huh. tables of stone, uh -huh. written with the finger of God. So the commandments was written by who? Written with the finger of God. They was written by who? The finger of God. They was written by who? The finger of God. Our people don't believe in God is the problem. That's right. Hey, you don't believe in God because you ain't, you literally don't know how to have a relationship with God. Right. right. Because the other nations don't got a God, bro. You blocking the system. You not listening, let her listen. You don't listen, let her listen. You don't want to listen. Yeah, watch out. Then watch the brother behind you because you walk behind don't hit him. Don't hit him. Guess what? Hold on. We talking to the system. Talking to the system. I just saw soul. Lord in mercy. I just saw Go ahead. <laughs> now, look, I want to come back to her sister because she's listening and she may have a question. I want to make sure she, if she got a question, we're going to answer her question. What's this brother right here talking about? No, no, right here. So, sis, do you have a question, sis? You have a question about anything so far that we talked about? So, you understand that the commandments and the testimony was given with the finger of God. Is that what we read? Did you hear that? Or did he interrupt you? Did he interrupt you? We gonna read it for you again. Here we go. Let's read it again. Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Watch this. And he gave unto Moses when he had made it in the communion with him uh -huh. upon Mount Sinai uh -huh. two tables of testimony. So Moses was given two tables of testimony. Tables of stone uh -huh. written with the finger of God. So the testimony in the stone was written with the fingers of God. So what is that guy talking about? He said he got a relationship. 
relationship with God, but don't do what God says. Right. We cannot have a relationship with God until we do what God says. Right. Now, unfortunately, a lot of our people have not learned the truth about God because our pastors have failed our communities, period. Right. All of them, if they go to church on Sunday, they already broke the first rule of commandments. Right. Already. Because we go to church on Sunday, why? Do you go to church on Sunday, sis? Now, quick question. When were we taught to go to church on Sunday? Say it again. Say when we were children. When we were children. So our grandmothers and mothers and fathers and them taught us to go to church on Sunday. Is that right just because we've been taught that since we were children? Is it right or do we not know? We don't know. Now, we're going to read it out of the Bible on which one is it? Is it the second day of the week or the first day of the week? Because we're taught to go to church on Sunday and no one ever questions the pastor. Why do we come on Sunday when the fourth commandment says remember the Sabbath day? Why no one ever asks the pastor? Why don't we congregate on the second day of the week instead of the first day? No one ever asks that question in church, do they? Everybody goes and no one ever questions it. Let's read that in Leviticus. Leviticus 23 and 3. Because it tells us to do something on the seventh day of the week. Not the first day. Seventh day. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 23 verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Even these are my feasts. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done. So it said to work six days. Go ahead. But the seventh day. When is the seventh day of the week? Sir? It's the seventh day. Okay. On your phone. You got a calendar on your phone. Open it up. Saturday. What'd you say, brother? Saturday. All praises. Saturday. Literally, the definition of Sunday is the of the week. The definition. We got that in the front of us? Watch this. We're going to read it. Out of the Bible dictionary, Sunday is the first day of the week. That is the definition of Sunday. Got it? Let's read it. You read it. You hear? Here we go. The Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary. Sunday, first day of the week. That's what the name means. Right. So it is the first day. So that would mean the seventh day is what then? Saturday. So now, let's read that part again. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3. Six days shall work be done. Uh -huh. But the seventh day. Saturday. Saturday. Go ahead. Is the Sabbath of rest. Go ahead. And holy convocation. It says Saturday is the Sabbath of rest. A holy convocation, a holy gathering. They told us to come together on a Saturday, right here on the Sabbath. That's what we just read. On the Sabbath, that was Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3. Now, when Christ was on the earth, did Christ sin? He did. Christ sin? Remember, Christ was considered perfect now. 1 Peter 2 20. Or is it uh, 2 Peter 1 20? First Peter. First Peter's one twenty. Is that right? Yes, sir. Let's watch this now. Two twenty one. Sorry. Two twenty. Yes, Two twenty. Because it said, because we, because you, I asked, did Christ ever sin? Christ was considered perfect. Let's read it out of the Bible. Is that what I want? Let's get it. The book of First Peter, chapter two, verse twenty one. Mm -hmm. For even unto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us. Leaving us an example. It said Christ left us an example. Christ left us an example. Go ahead. That ye should follow his steps. And we must follow his steps. We must do what he did. Ain't that what they say Christian mean? Be like Christ. Ain't that what they say? Christian means to be like Christ or the uh, anointed one. So it was supposed to be like Christ. Read on. Who did no sin. Christ did what? Did no sin. So Christ never sinned. You see that? And we're reading that in the New Testament. Christ never sinned. Read on down. Who did no sin? Neither was God found in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Who, when he was reviled? Re Are we good? Neither was God found in his mouth. Deceived. Christ did not deceive anyone. He was not walking around deceiving people. So Christ did no sin. What day did Christ go to church? Is it Luke 2, John 2? Luke 4. Luke 4. Thank you. All praise. Luke 4. Let's see what day did Christ go to church on. Let's see what day. We're going to read it now. You got it? Luke 
four six, and six, 16. 16. Yeah. Yep, here we go. The book of Luke, chapter four, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was. If, if something's your custom, it's something you do all the time, am I right? If it's your custom, you do it all the time. It's something that you do regularly. So, so it said that Jesus, he will come to Nazareth as his custom was, something he did all the time. Go ahead. He went into the synagogue. He went into the synagogue, the church, the temple. Go ahead. On the Sabbath day. On what day? On the Sabbath day. Go ahead. And stood up for to read. And he stood up. He was reading in church on the Sabbath day. And you read that all in Acts where Paul was in the synagogues teaching the Israelites on the Sabbath day. Right. After Sabbath, after Sabbath. It never said Sunday. Right. It never said first day of the week. And if Christ went on the Sabbath day and it said we must follow his step, what day should we go to church? Saturday. That's right. right. All praise to the most high you pick that up, but that's what the Bible says. Why don't pastors teach the Bible? You know why? Money. Right. Church is one of the biggest industries on the planet right. for money. And our people give over our earnings for people to lie to us. Where if we read it for ourselves, we would not be able to lie. So now, because we won't read it, we trust them to tell us what God said when God told us we have to read it for ourselves. Let's get back. 2 Timothy 2, 16. And that's that, and that's and because whenever we don't do it, we're not doing it. We're not doing what God said. Same way if we don't go to the Sabbath day, the same way if we don't keep the commandments. If I don't keep the commandments, I don't know God. I cannot know God if I don't keep the Sabbath day. Right. And we're gonna read that. But go ahead, let's read this. You know what I want? 216? 15. 316. That's what I want. Oh, 316. Here we go. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Go ahead. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Because that brother was like, well, who wrote it? The Bible said all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Go ahead. And it's profitable for doctrine, uh -huh. for reproof, for correction. The Bible is supposed to correct us because we've been living wrong for so long. The Bible is now supposed to correct us. Right. That's what the Bible does. Go ahead. For instruction and in righteousness. It's to instruct us to be righteous. Because right now we don't know how to be righteous. Right. So the Bible says instruction and in righteousness. Go ahead. That the man of God may be perfect. It said the man of God will become what? May be perfect. So a man of God can become perfect when he learns the Bible and does what it says. Right. Go ahead. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Because they're going to be full of good works. Because they're going to do the good works that's written in the Bible. Keep the Sabbath day. They're going to love their neighbor as themselves. They will never kill another brother that looks like them. Right. They will never have commit adultery on their wife. They will never mistreat or abuse their own children. They will make sure they raise them properly right. according to God. Right. That's what the Bible does for anybody. Especially out and our community need it the most. Right. And we're the only ones that the Bible was given to. Because we believe the Bible was written for everybody. Amos 3. Amos chapter 3 verse 1. We get punished because we are the sons and daughters of God and don't do what God said. And we're the only people that God knows. Go ahead. Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. So the Bible is only talking to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. That is it. It's only talking to the children of Israel. Go ahead. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. And that's how you know it's talking about the Israelites because that's the only people that he saved out of Egypt. You had a mixed multitude, but he didn't cut nothing about them. Go ahead. Saying, you only have I known. God says, you only have I known. You Israelites, read. Of all the families of the earth. So just like he said, we are above all the people, we the only people he know. Go ahead. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. And that is why we get punished for our sins. Right. It's because we are the sons of God. And because we don't do what God says, he punishes us only. Right. That's right. That is what the Bible is about. Matter of fact, matter of fact, 
Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 in the second to last verse. I think that's what I want, the whole duty of man. Because a lot of us walking around here thinking our purpose is to walk around here uh, uh, having babies all over the place. We, uh, the sisters think their purpose is to twerk all over the place. The kids think it's their purpose to go and kill one another. Don't make no sense. That's not why we were put on earth. Right. Let's read why we was put on earth. This is your purpose, black men and black women. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh -huh. Fear God and keep his commandment. Go ahead. For this is the whole duty of man. That is the only reason why you was born. That's, That's right. right. Is to keep the commandments of God. Right. So when you go and put drugs in your body, you're going to get your purpose. Right. When you go out here and create babies and become baby daddies and baby mamas all over the place, you're going outside your purpose. Right. When you go out here and worship idols on Sunday, when you do Easter, when you do Christmas, when you do Thanksgiving, you are going against your purpose. Right. That's not why you was put on the planet. Right. You were put on the planet to do what God said. Right. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 